Welcome back everybody, this is my 36th update video. Now if you're not familiar with my channel, these update videos are where I go back to 10 past product reviews in order. I take a look back at the original review to see how that went, and I also let you know if anything has changed since my original review was posted, because I do try to use a lot of these products for at least up to a year after I review them. So the reviews covered in this video are number 351 through 360. That covers May and June of 2021, so it's been over a year. So let's get started with update number 36. Number 351 was a product called the Salad Sling. It was a product featured on Shark Tank. It's basically a microfiber cloth that allows you to spin your greens by swinging it in the air. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. It's supposedly three layers, so you have two microfiber cloths separated by a plastic liner, so you can use both sides before you have to wash it. All right, so the instructions are pretty basic. All you have to do is just open it up. Put a stack of your greens in there, grab all four handles, swing it, uh, pat it dry, and you should be good to go. Flip it over for more use. All right, so the first thing I do is take these two handles, yes, yes, and the third one, and the fourth one. Swing it in a wide circle for five to 10 seconds. I don't know about this. Is that really gonna work? All right, I was, is that 10 seconds? I'll keep going. I'll go a little longer. Remaining Lay it flat and pat dry to remove any remaining droplets. Okay, well, it doesn't seem like it's much drier. Let's see. That's not too bad, really. I mean, there's a little bit of moisture on there, but I can see how a lot of it got on the bottom layer here. All right, so I'm just doing a quick pat dry with a nano towel. I'm gonna put this off to the side and leave it as is. We're gonna compare to the microfiber towel and see how that goes. And then what we do is just roll the towel up. Give it a little pat. Now we unroll it. Let's compare the two of these and see how it looks. You definitely see some droplets still on there. It's, it's pretty dry. Not bad, pretty dry. And now the towel technique that I just did, it's also about, I'd say about the same. On the salad sling, you can see where all the moisture collected there in the center. So it seems like it may have collected more moisture on the second round. The first round, uh, it doesn't seem like it collected as much from the romaine. So take it that for what it is. Well, in two rounds, I think the first round with the romaine lettuce was probably a tie. I think the second round, a slight edge to the salad sling. So I, maybe there is a benefit to it over just a microfiber towel. I'm not sure. Perhaps shockingly, I did not continue to use the salad sling. I have other salad spinners. I just don't feel like it really gave me much of a benefit over the normal towel technique I used to use on my own. So it was fun to try, but ended up in the boneyard. Number 352 was a collection of four ridiculously simple gadgets to try out, and let's see how the original video went. PB Jife, ultimate peanut butter knife spreader. Clean the jar, cut and stir, and no messy hands. Interesting about this is this curved end here, which is kind of interesting. Allows you to get around the edges, around the bottom. My hand is safely away from the battle zone here. So, you know, a lot of people would probably just give up there because it's not worth all the scraping, but let's try the PB Jife and see what we got here. Well, this. Now I couldn't even get nearly this much with a regular knife, so that's already better. All right, let's take a look at the OXO Simply Tear. 25 bucks for a paper towel dispenser, better be worth it. Stick it on there. I'm not having a problem with it. I'm just sitting here tearing them off one at a time. It's working, but as the roll gets smaller, it's not quite as good as when it started off. You know what, I'm gonna say that was about a B plus knife that's really designed for putting butter on corn has a curvature to it, so it kind of conforms to the corn on the cob. So let, let's check it out. Room temperature and right out of the fridge. Cut off a pat of butter, and if you see it's rounded, it is a bit oddly satisfying. This is also a little bit more butter than I usually use, but I don't see a big difference between the room temperature and out of the fridge as far as the application with the knife goes. It's better. I'm not sure if it's necessary. This is my very simple looking gadget called the Fridge Monkey. Now it has seven slots here. I don't think you can use seven at a time though. Okay, so I can definitely only fit four on this bottom row and then we just stack on top of there. Not only does it work, but it's actually kind of an attractive display. I guess if you had them at a party or something, it's. It's not going anywhere. All right, so we can get fit three on the bottom of these bottles of wine. Here's how it looks from my perspective. I think it looks pretty nice. There we go, look. Oh well, if it, my shelf was a little bit lower, it would fit up there. I could always lower the shelf, but I'm not going to. But I could, but I'm not. Overall, I think that, you know, if this looks like something that you would like in your fridge, it works uh, quite well. Now of that collection, I do use the PB Jive sometimes, but the Simply Tear is the one that gets used every day. 
And as you can see, I've since paired it with the towel topper and it has held up beautifully. I've had no issues with the Simply Tear and I've used it probably every day since that video was shot. Number 353 was a couple of food storage bags. These were Avian advertised a lot online back in 2021 and I gave them a shot. Here's how my original test went. All right, so in this hand are the food bunker storage bags and these are the Wisely storage bags. Wisely food bunker, wow, that's that similar. But I really can't tell these apart. I've looked at them top to bottom. Every marking is exactly the same on the two of these. I guess the nice feature is that they do stand up when you're pouring into them, so that's uh, quite helpful. Well, you know, no leaking. The large model is a little bit different. Look at the size of these clips on here. They're huge. Feels pretty solid. All right, that's good. That's good. This is kind of a good size if you're going to take just your lunch and have a little bit of leftovers even on a giant container. See how they hold up in the fridge overnight. All right, in the fridge, I've got the peppers. I've got the pasta sauce. I've got the watermelon. Down here in the freezer, I've got the chicken chili from the crock pot. We'll see how these look tomorrow. See how the containers look, how they smell, and how they wash up in the dishwasher. The pepper container looks perfect. Food bunker looks, uh, looks fine too. So I've got all these kind of dirty, grimy bags. They're all going in the dishwasher now. Off we go. And... Oh! It held up. Oh, they're still kind of wet. This one looks like it got some stain in the bottom. That's not good. It's just spots all inside of it. There's the discoloration on this one. There's the discoloration on this one. I'm just not happy with the way these look after coming out of the dishwasher. This one is shockingly bad. It's uh, totally stained. I was, I was just about to give these a ringing endorsement until the cleaning process, and now it's a conditional endorsement. All right, a quick update on these. I've used one of each kind on a regular basis. The rest of them I kind of use on occasion. Let me show you the ones that have gotten regular use. First up, the Wisely. Now, the, the material itself has held pretty well, but I will say that one of the snaps did break off. Uh, about six months into it. It hasn't really affected too much. This one I actually use for dog food, for dry dog food. Uh, it, so it, you can see some crumbs down in there. I still use the one snap, but one of them did break off. So, I mean, that snap was used every day. Maybe it's used more than most people use it, but that's the update on that one. This one's been used for cat food almost every day. This one's held up pretty well too, although I don't think that we've been snapping this one closed. You can see it's slightly discolored. It's a little bit off-white. Besides the, the one snap on this one, I think both have held up pretty well as far as material-wise goes. There's no been leaks, punctures. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Number 354 was a collection of highly rated ice cream scoops all of them were actually pretty good, and here's how that video went. So these are the scoops I actually picked out for this particular video. Technically, it's a six uh, scoop comparison, although one is just kind of a guest scoop. All these are highly rated, so I expect all of them to do well. Oh, it's going right into it. Oh, wow. I just easily penetrated it. Now you just kind of push the trigger. Oh, wow. All right, we're getting a ball. We're getting a ball from the ball seat. And it's cutting through it pretty good, actually. I'm not sure about that thin tip. It, it's good for cutting through it, but not as good for forming, in my opinion. It has a much wider opening on the top. The Gorilla Grip, just because of his wider opening, forms a, a... It's not perfect, but it's better. I'm not seeing a huge difference between the two of these, this one and the Gorilla. The Spring Chef is a little heavier, but I am able to form a pretty good ball with both of them, really. Zero feels really nice in my hand. It's very solid. I can get a nice, perfectly round scoop. Look at the scoop. Zero scoop looks it looks pretty good. Here's the two that look kind of the same, the Gorilla and the Spring Chef. In the middle here, you have the Zero and the Balsy, which I think they both look pretty good. The Midnight Scoop, I think, is the least impressive, and then here we have the Thrifty. All of them very good. I'm kind of leaning towards the two in the center and the Thrifty. When all was said and done, the one that I ended up going with is the Zero. As you can see, it's held up quite well. It looks good as new. Haven't had any issues with it. One thing I will say is the availability of this has not been very good. Sometimes it's not available. I've seen it on Amazon, not in stock. It is currently in stock now as I film this, but availability does seem to vary. Number 355 was a collection of popcorn poppers. I've picked out a variety of different designs. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. We're getting pops. Here it comes. Oh, we're getting good stuff now. 
We put some salt in there, some butter, it'll be good. This one is a little bit different design. It's kind of unusual. Dump in your half cup of kernels. Oh, look at it bursting through there. Ugh, that's very cool. Oh yeah. There's something very satisfying about the way it bursts out of there. It's like a popcorn superhero. Turn the entire thing over. And then remove the base. Salt and butter will be good. Time for the whirly pop now. Basically you just have this lid and this handle which uh, stirs the popcorn around. Half a cup of kernels. Oh yeah. I didn't see any unpopped kernels hardly at all. The oil makes a big difference on these. Just stir crazy by West Bend. Half a cup of popcorn. It's kind of making this evil growling sound right now. And a hiss too, interesting. Wow, that was kind of quick. Got to shove the lid on quickly. They say I do this as fast as possible. Put the lid on. Turn away from yourself. Lift off. Still need salt, but the oil adds something already. Now for the big boy here. Half a cup of popcorn. Two tablespoons of oil. Close the cabinet door. Oh yeah. That is so cool, look at that. Oh wow, I wasn't expecting that. The magnet on this door is kind of weak. I got a couple of burnt pieces in there. I'm not, I'm not as happy. I, it, it worked well, but I think some of the others work better. I give it a slight advantage of the stir crazy just because of the butter feature and it's not as hands-on, but really they all work pretty well. All right, so I have stuck with the stir crazy. That is the one I've used the most and I've used it a lot since that video was done. Let's head over to the kitchen and see how it's held up. I right, take a closer look. You know, you can, as you can see, I mean, it's been used, but it has held up nicely. I wouldn't say there's been too much discoloration or any other major issues with it. So I'm, I'm happy with this one. I use it quite a bit, more than I thought I was going to. Number 356 was a collection of what I call misfit water bottles. Those are water bottles that can function as a water bottle. That they kind of had other functions as well. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. So you have this much water, this much storage. They say you can add ID or keys, a couple of keys with the ID. Oh, so far we're on a roll here. It sounds like a toilet flush. It does, but it's not leaking. I'm gonna take all five of my bottles on the road here and give it a real world test. And it's, it's not wet, so nothing there is leak, leaking. That's good. Mm, tastes like water. Oh yeah, very simple. And look at this. Wow, that actually actually worked pretty well. All right, so uh, this is not insulated. Take a drink in between reps. I wouldn't recommend anything other than water because clean is going to be a nightmare. The more you drink, the lighter this gets. It's bulky. It's kind of hard to carry. It's definitely a novelty bottle more than anything. It's also awkward because all the weight is over here. So it's like, <laughs> you're kind of struggling to hold it up to your mouth. All right, here we go. This is an insulated one. So this should actually be cold. There is still some ice in there. That's a good thing. Mm. Some people do not like the sensation of drinking out of stainless steel. If you don't, this may not be a good option for you. This one has the best cap. If you're, if you're ranking caps, this is the best cap. Oh, there's a lot of ice still in here. Good insulation for this one. But it's an attractive bottle and it, insulation's really good. So I think the Bindle bottle worked quite well. Now I've got to say that I've got a lot of water bottles around this house. And not only that, but I've got a lot of tumblers. I've just got a lot of ways to drink water here. So of this group, the one that I used the most was probably the collapsible water bottle. It was briefly in my rotation for the latter half of 2021, but it kind of got pushed to the back and it never, never made it out. The Thor hammer was kind of a display piece for a while. A lot of people liked the way that looked, but it's not very functional as a water bottle. It was an interesting collection, but I'm not sure how useful some of those really were. Number 357 was a collection of products under 20 bucks. It was an interesting collection. Here's a look back at how the original review went. Attaching the pieces. Oh, not bad. I mean, I, I turned my air off in the car, so it's a little bit stuffy in here. That's it's really not that bad. You really can't even swipe up either. Oh, come on now. When the phone times out, it's going to turn the fan off. There we go. Come on now. Are you serious? Terrible. 
I didn't think that french fries and ketchup could be displayed so nicely, but it's nicely displayed. The french fry holder, when you get to the bottom, it's kind of hard to reach in there. It's like, it, it actually gets underneath this clip, so you kind of have to fish that little last part out. Not, not really a big deal, but something to consider. That would work quite well, I think. It's a little bit loose, but I guess it's kind of forming a seal around it. Seems to work pretty well. Oh, that fit nicely. Perfectly sealed. That actually is holding it quite well. Oh, you can even stand it up. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. It's a bit strange, but it's also a bit oddly satisfying. Uh, this is a, one of the highest rated items I've ever seen on Amazon. Go low, medium, high, off, low, medium, high, off. It's kind of an amber, like a warmer light and a cooler light. I don't even need my reading glasses, which I might need when, if it's kind of dark. Can adjust it like this. Can adjust it like that. Motion activated light that actually has a light that points up or down or both. All right, up, down both now see the just the down makes sense because it's illuminating the floor which is what you want to see if you're using it as a night light which i assume you are see as you can see when it's when it's on the uh, up mode the floor is still dark it's kind of shining your face it's almost counterproductive the up feature by itself is kind of useless so you might as well just leave it on both and call it a night light and call it good. All right, so of that group, I would say the Glocusant Neck Light is the one that I use the most. That one kind of got a decent amount of use over the winter when I was in bed reading. As it got lighter here throughout the year, I kind of got put in a drawer and I didn't pull it back out again. But I will say the battery life on that one was really good. I only charged it a few times. It lasts for a long time, so I was very happy about the battery life on that one. The other product I want to give you an update on was the Up Down Light. Now this one I left in the same location until July of this year, so it was in place for over a year and it did work pretty well but I wanted to point out one thing that didn't really occur to me in my original review the location where I placed this was kind of a high traffic darker area in my house which I guess is the idea but the problem is it kept flipping on and off all day long anytime anybody walked past it which means I was constantly changing the batteries for it the battery life maybe it's good but it just was used so much that I had to change it off and that was kind of a downfall I wish you could just plug it in the wall if this had a plug in the back, that would be much more useful. With batteries, I, I didn't like it as much. The fact that it uses batteries to me was the biggest flaw of this product. Number 358 was a collection of unusual lamps, some of which you may have seen me use over the past year, but let's first take a look back at how the original video went. Is that every time you open it, you get a different color. But I guess if you wanted a specific color, you have to keep opening and closing the book until you get it. Okay, this one cycles through all the colors. Here we go. It finally died at 23 and a half hours. Didn't make it 24. Almost 24 hours. It has a very nice look to it. You can also cycle through the different colors of lights. Kind of a warm, cool, and amber lights. Well, you have wireless charging here, which is barely mentioned in the instructions, by the way. So you have USB-C, micro USB, and lightning connectors. It's kind of a nice nightstand lamp, but it's not gonna be the kind of lamp that you use to light your entire room, even if you have it pointing out like that. Very bright. Green, blue. So that one looks like it's building. Very cool. This one's kind of a breathing type mode, I guess. We got a lot of options here, and I like the fact that it works perfectly right out of the box. It looks nice though. If you just want an accent light, it pretty much go anywhere. We can go all the way up, we can go down. We can go on this wheel here to change the temperature of the light as well. Now we have the color wheel. We just start off here in blue and you can go anywhere around this circle here. It took me about 30 minutes to set the app up. It's awful. Now let me turn the lamp off and put the floor lamp on. In fact, I can even adjust it to kind of more of the same shade as that one. Certainly a functional lamp. You can angle the light. It looks like about 15 degrees maybe. It's a very interesting looking lamp. You can spin it in circles, but it doesn't seem real responsive to doing it like that. It seems like it even skips colors sometimes. The speed you can control, how fast the effect goes. You can see this is moving very slowly. Or I can speed it up. I'm just holding it down right now. You can cycle through the effects like this. I've kind of rearranged things a little bit. I've got the corner lamp over there, the ring light there. I've got the floor lamp here. Now, up until recently, I used four of those regularly. The book lamp I don't use right now, but I still use three of them. Right back there is the ring light. The other two I'm actually using for this light and projected behind me. Check this out. Back here is the corner lamp. I'm using that to project blue onto the wall. And for the red, I've got my floor lamp 
which is also held up well, but the only problem with this one is if sometimes if I unplug it, I have to repair it with the app and that is a pain. Overall, I've, I've been very happy with those lamps. I never expected to use them that much, but they've held up pretty well since then. Number 359, I pulled out one back from the 90s. It was the Gojo headset for phones. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. And what do you know? It's actually working. What do you think? Wow, I'm going to have to make some phone calls on this. Well, that doesn't really sit too well. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of sliding off. It's kind of, ow. I go a little faster here. Squeeze. Attach. Would you walk around like this? I don't know. I mean, maybe around the house. And it, it is kind of slipping around. It looks like he has the Gojo way in the front of his head like that. But I don't know how you're going to line that up with your ear. I mean, maybe his ears are further, further than mine are. I don't know. And it's slowly sliding down my face. Ding. Hello? One Mississippi. Hey, mom, I can't talk right now. So hello? One Mississippi. Hey, mom, I can't talk right now. So how, how do I sound? Do I sound clear? I sound, You actually don't sound clear. I don't think it's next to my ear. I probably look really cool right now with this phone attached to my head. My hands are free and it's slipping off my head. Drive hands free with the Gojo while on the phone. The phone directly to my head while I'm driving. <laughs> That's gonna look really silly. It looks awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. It said it can hold any phone though. They were showing using like cordless phones and stuff too, but you gotta try it on an old school corded phone just to see if it actually works. Maybe this is better suited towards these types of phones than the, than the cell phones. Honestly, it's not, this isn't that bad compared to my iPhone. It looks ridiculous, but it does work. And this is digging into my head too, so well, maybe not. All right, so obviously I did not continue to use that one. It has ended up in the boneyard where it's probably going to stay. It was fun to try, but definitely not something that holds up in the 2020s. Number 360 was a comparison of an Amazon's Choice versus the number one bestseller bottle cooler. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. It's the Asobu versus the Bottle Keeper, Amazon's number one bestseller versus the Amazon's Choice. The Asobu comes in four parts. There's the cap. If you're going to use a can, this part can come off and this stays on. This can also come off. And these typically stay together when you're doing it with a bottle. All right, so we're going to put the Corona in here. And then this has a bottle opener built into it. So let's see how that works. Slightly below average bottle opener, I would say. All right, bottle keeper. This has three parts. You have the cap and it has the base. You put this over the bottle and kind of slides it on. There's a little bit of a resistance there. And then the cap goes on last on the bottom. 44, almost 44 and 44. Stopwatch has begun. Cap this one off. All right, time to rush these into the blazing heat and see what happens. All right, current temperature in Las Vegas is about 100. All right, the table it's sitting on is also 118 degrees. The stopwatch is going. I'm going to come out in 30 minutes and take the temperature again and see how they hold up. We want, some, we want it from the bottom though. Bottle keeper 66, 67. A Sobu. I'm going to say 62. And the regular Corona at 85. All right, in the 50s, 59 degrees. Bottle keeper. Oh, warmer. Definitely warmer. The naked Corona, not good at all. All right, so we have, I think we have a winner. So to me, the Asobu is the superior product. All right, so this is one of those things. I really tried to keep using these. I left them out hoping I would keep using them, but I, I never really did. It's just not the kind of product that I reach for. So even though they're perfectly fine products, they do have merit. It's just not something that was very useful to me. All right, so that's it for this update. I would say it was a pretty good collection. The, of the ones in this group that I used the most, I would say that would be all the lamps. All of those were, were useful to me. The Stir Crazy Popcorn Maker I use uh, several times a month, and the Simply Tear Paper Towel Holder I use every day. So as with every batch of items, I always get at least a few of them that become a part of my normal rotation. But that's it for this video. I'll be back in about another month or two with my next update video. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.